Star Citizen is an open world space disaster simulator game. And like many of you, I've been playing this game for years, but I've always played on the legal side. As a security lead for a fairly large industrial org, I've had my fair share of fights against pirates, but I've always wondered what the other side was like. How much money did they make? Can anyone just become a pirate? Is piracy actually a gameplay loop or is it just griefers and gankers? I decided the time had come. Like a sheep hiding amongst the wolves, I would enter the realm of piracy and find out firsthand how the most hated players within Star Citizen actually live. First challenge was my account. I clearly couldn't help miners by day and then in some weird reverse superhero logic go out hunting those same miners by night. So I created an alt account, one with a slightly terrifying name that was not only recognisable but also instilled a sense of fear to encourage my targets to part with their hard-earned AUBC. Now I needed a fictional organisation to go with it, which shows off how serious I should be taken as a pirate. Next I could include the three golden rules to my pirate experiment, which I felt placed me on the piracy side and away from griefer status. I will always request a reasonable piracy fee, and upon payment no further harm will come to the target. I want to reward the behaviour of miners and traders who run with an armed escort. Therefore, I'll never run from a fight, no matter how overwhelming the odds, giving my target a very good chance to destroy me if they arrive with friends. You can't pay, we take it away. I will always accept payment from a friend or kind stranger in global chat if you can't afford the fee. But without payment in a timely fashion or outright refusal to pay, I will ultimately be forced to kill you. With my ethical piracy policies in place, I now had to learn how to actually pirate. Mongrel Squad, probably the most infamous pirate org within Star Citizen, do have a very thorough pirate academy on their YouTube channel, which goes through most of the basics needed to understand piracy in Star Citizen. Afterwards, I had to look at Space Cutlet's mad science videos. These videos in particular were incredibly detailed and went into key topics such as quantum snaring and distortion damage on ships. However, as someone who was never any good at maths, I learnt my first takeaway from this experiment. Piracy is actually fucking hard. Undeterred, I sent some money to my old and went shopping for the tools I would need. I required some specialist ships, and there was one ship in particular I was very excited to use. RSI Mantis is the only ship in the game with quantum enforcement device capable of pulling out trading ships and mining craft from quantum travel. As a single seat light craft it has the speed to catch up with most ships in the game and with distortion weapons I could keep any ship disabled, forcing my targets to negotiate with me, else facing destruction. I felt I was ready. There was one final key component I was missing before I could enter the verse. All the other pirate orgs had a catchphrase they deployed at the end of an engagement. I needed something chilling that instilled fear in the heart of those I crossed. My mind wandered back to lock, stock and two smoking barrels with Big Chris's final words. There is one more thing. It's been emotional. It's been emotional. Perfect. And so it was time. I had all my equipment ready, I knew where to look for potential targets and I turned my PvP slider all the way to full. Uh, mate, don't worry, you're just being pirated, okay? You're stealing from the working class, and you should be stealing <laughs> from the rich. Right, your fee's been paid. You can go.
317 dropped and with it the removal of distortion damage and EMPs. No longer could I stop a ship to negotiate terms of payment, it was either destroy the ship or nothing. This didn't feel like piracy to me and so I was stuck. Furthermore, with changes to mining and bunker missions, more people were raiding ground bunkers as opposed to running the industrial gameplay loops. People were able to make significant amounts of money from bunker missions, grabbing rare loot items which can be sold at shops. I could just wait outside the bunker and kill people as they left, taking their looted goods and selling it on, but again, this didn't sit right with me. There was one significant risk with bunker missions however, they were filled with enemy AI. Upon death, a player could request a medical beacon as a mission which, if accepted, allowed another player to rescue them. The problem is, the mission was bugged and never paid out. This felt like the perfect grey area for me to play in. I would take my Cutlass Red Ambulance, kidnap the individual and fly to a height of a few hundred metres. Here, I would remove their weapons, overheal them so they entered a drugged and disorientated state and gave them two options. Either they pay my fee or, in true pirate style, they walk the plank and fall to their death. There was one problem with this plan however. It meant that I was trapped on my own ship, several hundred meters above the ground, with some very drugged up and angry players. Stop it, stop it, stop it. No, 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 stop, stop. No, 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 wait, 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 where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? I can literally see you hiding there. What we're doing when a fat boy's ripping Oh, thank fuck for that. Hey, don't do it, don't do it, don't. Oh, come on. Please stop doing that. Please, please, please. <laughs> and so my experiment came close to its end. When I look at the total figures, what I made in 3 months of piracy I could have made in a few hours of grinding missions. My success rate of being paid for a hit was around 10% and the only reason I really made this much money was because I hit a couple of traders running with audio visual equipment. All in all though, I found my success rate was far higher when I flew with a couple of other people. That being said, where initially I was more focused on how much money could be made from piracy at the start of the video. I found that by the end of this experiment, I didn't care if I was paid. Running as a pirate was a similar experience to drinking full fat coke for the first time when you've only ever had the diet version. I didn't realise it then, but the way I used to play Star Citizen was to just go to this location, kill this person, then move to the next location and pick up this box and so on. I've been playing this game on autopilot. With piracy, every time I did something, there was a player interaction element to it. And sure, whilst not all of it was positive, I felt that for the first time I was playing a multiplayer game. I actually ended up wanting to log in more and more on my pirate account as opposed to my main as I was meeting so many new players. Some were other pirates, others were solely pirate hunters and I still to this day sometimes run with them on a number of operations. I found that if you treat others with respect and understand that not everyone likes being pirated, the best memories I have is where both myself and the target can laugh about it afterwards. And I would encourage anyone watching this video to do the same. Because let's face it, no good story ever starts off with, so I was doing this box mission right.
Emotional damage.